Hi, this is Leon Kubernetes with Google Video Series, and I'm Sergey Kanjelev, an engineer working on Kubernetes here at Google. In this video, I will be talking about Docker support deprecation in Kubernetes and how to migrate to ContainerD. So Docker is now deprecated in Kubernetes. It sounds scary. Reading the very first sentence in the release notes makes you pay attention. The second sentence introduces you to the new terms like Docker Shim and CRI. Let's talk about this. CRI stands for Container Runtime Interface. This is a glue that allows Kubernetes, which knows where to schedule port, talk to Container Runtime, which can run containers of this port. Kubernetes is responsible for orchestration. Runtime knows how to run and check the status of containers. There are various run container runtimes. Each has special features and decide on trade-offs they make between performance, security, and functionality. But as long as they are CRI compliant, you can use them with Kubernetes. ContainerD is an industry standard container runtime. You are likely already using it as it is layered underneath Docker. When Docker shim is used as container runtime, Kubelet, which is Kubernetes agent on a node, communicates with Docker to schedule containers and check on its status. Docker, in its turn, uses ContainerD to actually schedule containers, while also making these containers are visible and available for Docker tooling and UI. Switching to ContainerD as the container runtime eliminates this middleman. All the same containers can be run by ContainerD as before. But now, since containers were scheduled directly with ContainerD, they are not visible to Docker. So any Docker tooling or fancy UI you might have used before to check on these containers no longer available. You cannot get container information using Docker PS or Docker inspect commands. As you cannot list containers, you cannot get logs stop containers or execute something with Docker exec. By the way, stopping containers via Docker CLI directly was never a good idea, as it is better to allow, allow Kubernetes to orchestrate them. So you don't confuse Kubernetes by disappeared containers. You can still pull images or build them using Docker build command. But images built or pulled by Docker would not be visible by ContainerD and Kubernetes. And you need to push them to some registry to allow them to be used by Kubernetes. Now, as you know the limitations of migration to ContainerD, you may be more convinced that your application is unlikely to be affected by runtime change, even though you still use Docker to build containers. Some situations when you do have this dependency are running privileged pods executing Docker commands or doing it with SSH on a node directly or by installing agent on this node. We noticed that sometimes this dependency on Docker is coming from third-party tooling, not from the application directly. Those are typically monitoring and security agents. In very rare cases, you may have an indirect dependence on Docker-specific behavior, like a specific log message. But again, this is not common. As I said, it's rare that you need to run Docker CLI on your node. But if you discovered any of the use cases on a previous slide, there is an alternative. You can switch to CRI CTL. CRI CTL is a runtime-independent way to inspect and operate containers. You can find the cheat sheet of commands mapping between Docker CLI and CRI CTL following the link on the slide. OK, now you know the container runtime is. Reviewed potential problems with the migration and ready to switch to ContainerD. It is very easy with GKE. Just use the gcloud containers cluster update command to create the node pool again with a new node image type. This command will recreate nodes one by one while rescheduling the workload. 
Note, you can roll back as easy. And if you start getting benefits of this migration, you can run your application with less infrastructure overhead, more secure as you have less components involved, and be on the front line of new Kubernetes feature development. Let us know what you think and how your migration experience was. Thank you for viewing this episode of Learn Kubernetes with Google. I'm Sergey Kanjelev. Bye-bye.